Hello and welcome to our demonstration, our webinar demonstration of the Guterman um, Easy Scan equipment. I'll be your host today, Eric Galassi. Um, I am the uh, commercial director for Guterman USA. Uh, I'm located in my home office right now in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, assisting me today with this uh, demonstration is my colleague, Max Ward. Uh, he is our customer success associate and he's located up at our home office in uh, Newmarket, New Hampshire. Um, Max will be assisting me um, with uh, the questions at the end of our, our demonstration. There are a few instructions that you can see uh, on your screen uh, right now. Um, the purpose of this demonstration uh, is to give you a concise, uh, easy to understand um, demonstration of the easy scan equipment. Uh, this demonstration will be about 30 to 35 minutes long. And at the conclusion of the uh, webinar, um, we will uh, read those questions that were submitted to us via the chat. Uh, your chat button is located at the bottom of the screen. If you scroll to the bottom of your screen, you'll see the chat button appear. And feel free to type in any questions uh, and we will get to them at the end of the uh, presentation. Um, so without further ado, uh, we will uh, get involved and uh, learn a little bit about the Easy Scan correlating equipment. The Easy Scan is a three-in-one leak finder. Um, it is a, uh, a leak noise correlator, uh, an acoustic ground microphone, and an electronic listening stick. Um, it's a very budget-friendly, very simple, and easy-to-use kit designed for uh, municipal waterwork uh, uh, leak locators um, of varying degrees of expertise. Um, the Easy Scan kit uh, is easy to use. Uh, and you'll find um, it has a wide variety of applications out in the field. Um, it's all packaged in a easy to carry um, case. Um, and it will pr provide you with all of the instruments that you need to do uh, extensive and accurate uh, leak pinpointing and leak listening out in the field. Um, the kit uh, is operated by an Android smartphone. Um, it's an Android uh, app that is downloaded onto an Android uh, phone or tablet device. And it's the app that uh, is the central uh, organizing uh, and operating point of the, of the entire kit. Um, th this is available only for Android. Uh, this is not uh, uh, an app that can be run on your iPhone. Um, this is uh, an Android only app. Um, and if need be, um, we can include uh, an Android tablet uh, in the kit. Um, and for those of you who are concerned with how that Android device uh, folds into your greater IT world, um, you need not worry. Um, the tablet itself is just a standalone device. Um, the tablet is really only necessary to have the app on it um, to program um, and set out and deploy and collect the data. Um, the tablet itself does not need to connect into your greater IT network. Um, at your authority, um, and uh, it doesn't even need a SIM card. Um, you can get uh, Wi-Fi access if you need to have Wi-Fi access on the tablet at initial setup. Um, so it really can be just considered a standalone device. All right, let's take a look at, uh, at the details of this kit. Uh, the EasyScan kit is a a leak correlator that pinpoints precisely um, the location of the leak along a length of pipe. Um, these sensors are uh, very flexible as far as how they can be positioned and where can they and where they can be placed upon the pipe network. It's a magnetic connection, um, and all the operator needs to do is to find an access point uh, uh, 
on the pipeline, uh, positioning the leak in between the two sensors. As you can see, these, these uh, sensors can be placed on hydrants, um, valves, uh, T, uh, T uh, uh, shut off keys for uh, curb stops. Um, anywhere you have a, a nice clean metal to metal contact point um, with your water system. The uh, EasyScan Com Link, which is the device at the upper right hand corner of the screen there, um, allows the communication to occur between the app on the tablet and the sensors. And it's a Bluetooth co connection between the, uh, the Com Link and your uh, Android tablet. The use of the EasyScan kit out in the field is very easy. Um, it allows you to uh, deploy the logger uh, in the valves. Um, the, the compact size of the sensor allows for a wide variety of applications uh, on valves, curb stops, uh, meter boxes. A handy uh, lowering string is included in the kit to help you lower the logger down. And here is a view of using the app. The logger placed on a uh, shutoff key. And then the sensors can then be uh, transformed into a ground mic. And also a listening stick. And then the data can then be analyzed um, through our uh, through a variety of uh, analytic tools, uh, including our zone scan system. And this these are the contents of your kit. Your kit will come with a, a ground mic plate, uh, listening handle rods. Um, your EasyScan um, comm link, a charging cable, your red and blue EasyScan sensors, your lowering cables, and a set of headphones. All those components uh, can be combined now to create your listening stick, your loggers, as well as your ground microphone. The listening stick uh, threads uh, onto the end of the sensor, and now you have the ability to uh, touch meters in, or valves down in uh, deep chambers and do uh, your listening um, via the comm link uh, and your headphones, which are plugged into your uh, Android app. The leak logger then has a magnetic base that can be screwed into the base of the sensor. And this base allows you to uh, attach the, uh, the sensor to a valve or hydrant. The clip at the end of the lowering uh, cable allows easy connection to the sensor. And now you can safely and easily lower the sensor down into place. And finally, the ground microphone plate is threaded onto the, to the rods. A sensor is magnetically attached to the top of the plate. And now you have a ground microphone. Now what I'm going to do uh, is walk through all of the steps that one would take in going out and finding a leak. Uh, and um, this process, as you will see, is very easy and straightforward. I have included in this series of screenshots all of the screenshots that you would uh, go through as you're doing a typical leak. So we'll get started. When you open up your EasyScan app, you'll be directed to the front page. Um, and this allows you to choose correlation, listening, 
or your browse data, which is saved data from previous correlations and listenings. Tapping on correlation brings you to the next screen, which the user now sets the amount of time necessary for you to deploy the red and blue sensor. So typically the valves would be cleaned out um, and uh, a time setting of two or three minutes would be set. Once your time setting of three minutes is set, you tap the next button at the bottom of the screen. That brings you to the program sensors screen. At this point, your communication link, your comm link will be turned on and Bluetooth connection with your device will be made and you'll tap on program. Once programming begins, the app will guide you through the, the, the process as it's occurring. You'll see that the link has been connected properly and it's initializing sensors. Once your red sensor is programmed, you'll get a green check. And then the, the programming of the blue sensor will begin. Once the blue sensor has been programmed, the deploy sensor screen uh, appears giving you basic uh, directions on how to deploy your sensor. You'll hit the next button. You'll get another two instructions. You'll hit the OK button. And now it'll be time to go and, and uh, deploy your red sensor. On this screen, you will see in the upper left-hand corner the time remaining until these sensors turn on to begin their listening. So basically, this is a clock telling you how much time you have left to deploy the sensor. These sensors are GPS plotted using the GPS in the, uh, in the, uh, in the tablet. Um, the, up, the green button in the upper right hand corner uh, will allow you to plot the sensor as it appears out in the world. Once the red sensor is deployed, the screen will ask you to deploy your blue sensor. You'll walk down the end of the street, deploy the blue sensor and you'll see that you've made You've deployed uh, with plenty of time remaining, in this case, 24 seconds. Once the blue sensor is deployed, the wait screen will appear, telling you how much more time you have until the actual correlation and listening of the sensors begins. Once that clock reaches zero, a new clock will appear indicating the time now remaining that the sensors are doing their data collection. In most cases, this will be anywhere between 45 and 30 seconds. Once the collection, once the data collection clock has expired, you will then be instructed to collect your sensors. You'll tap the OK button. Now that you'll have two, your two sensors in hand, it's now time to read the sensors again. You'll tap the read button. And just as uh, occurred when we were turning the sensors on, a process will appear. The link will be connected, reading the red sensor. Once the red sensor is done, it'll start reading the blue sensor. And finally, the calculating results window will appear. The app will begin processing the data from the two sensors. And it will give you an indication of what you found, leak found. At this point, you can tap on show result. Your save correlation screen will come up. You have the ability to save all this data. And the comment window will be automatically populated uh, where you are out in the world based upon the maps, um, the app reading the maps. Um, as you can see, um, South 27th Street. Um, has been populated um, and you will hit save and this will save the data on your app on your device Now that you've got data from the two loggers and you have a leak indicated between the two sensors It's now time to tell the app what type of pipe material and diameter that the sensors are sitting on So they can turn this correlated leak into a pinpointed leak so you'll select your pipe type and you will be instructed to enter your pipe properties. And the material and diameter is, is a simple drop-down menu. Uh, when you click on those windows, a drop-down menu will appear with the variety of pipe materials and a variety of pipe diameters. 
the pipe length was established through the GPS on the device. Um, you can certainly uh, uh, fine tune that by wheel measuring between your two sensors uh, and change that length if there was any type of discrepancy between the GPS plotting and the measurement. Once you're happy with your material diameter and length, you'll tap the save button. And you will now see the leak pinpointed. At the top left-hand corner of the screen will be the percentage of quality of correlation, of pinpointing correlation. You will also see at the bottom of the screen, the distance in feet, measurement, measuring from both of your sensors. You will also have with the upper right-hand corner, you will have a blue dot that allows you to uh, look at the correlation graph, as well as the filtering um, detail of that particular leak data. The Easy Scan um, has auto filtering, which is a fantastic feature um, that automatically filters and senses and looks for the best sound along the Hertz range in order to establish good correlation. This auto feature uh, takes out all the guesswork of the operator uh, and provides the best sound analysis for the operator without having to, without the operator having to make decisions on the filtering. Once the leak has been pinpointed, you can now easily transform your easy scan into a ground mic or a listening stick. You basically choose the listening configuration that you want, attach your sensor to the listening plate, go back out to the leak area, and now on the listening screen, you will have a play button in the upper left-hand corner. You'll be able to hit that button and begin playing and listening for the sound. All the while, you can save your data and you can save your listening. Also too, the app has embedded in it an event status. So you can easily keep track of the various steps of where you are in the process of your leak investigation and your, and, and your progress towards um, finding that leak. As you can see, the investigation um, has um, three inputs, your investigation, your leak, and your no leak. This allows the user to easily identify the, the process and the steps and the results of the uh, leak activity uh, that they just undertook. And then the final screen is all of your areas, all of your leak listening and leak correlating activities are saved on the app, on the tablet, that you can always go back to uh, and refer um, to previous um, leak activities. Uh, and you can see with each of the saved leak activities, you'll see the location of your leak, the date, and the quality of your leak correlation. And what I just showed you there was the entire, all the steps necessary for you to go out into the field with the Easy Scan Kit pinpoint a leak, do your leak listening to confirm the leak, and to save the data and to begin the investigation and leak and data recording process. What you see now is a case study. Um, our good friends out at Colorado College um, had a leak on a heated piece of pipe um, the pipe itself was inside another um, uh, conduit pipe, so it was absolutely necessary uh, and vital that they accurately um, located that leak. Uh, as you can see, uh, with the conduit pipe, the leak could not surface. It was contained within the outer pipe. Um, and our good friends at Colorado College pulled out their easy scan, set up their sensors, put in their pipe data, 
and came up with their leak located. And you can see from our pictures here, uh, once they cut the pipe, they were um, spot on um, to their leak. At this point, um, my uh, colleague Max will get on. If we have any questions, um, he can uh, certainly um, read those questions to us and we can uh, address any questions uh, that the uh, audience might have. All right, thanks, Eric. Um, all right, so we have one question. Uh, do you need one tablet or phone uh, to program the sensors or two tablets, two phones? Uh, that's a good question. The EasyScan kit only requires one tablet, one device. Um, it really is, all, is uh, a one person operation. Um, it is one person can operate it. It's only one tablet necessary to, to program the loggers, uh, the sensors, uh, deploy the sensors and collect the sensors. Um, so it really is a, a, a kit designed for absolute ease of use uh, by a single person. Great. All right. At this time, um, let me just uh, make it clear to everyone how to enter in questions into chat. So if you haven't, if you're not familiar, if you're already familiar with it, uh, just bear with me. So move around your cursor and go to the, move it to the bottom of your screen. And there should be a taskbar that pops up um, and you should see that chat icon. Uh, just click that and um, there will be a chat box. And again, just like the opening screen said, um, your questions will only be visible to me and uh, Eric and, uh, and no one else. So, all right, next question here. How can the data be tied to an existing ZoneScanNet account if a phone or a uh, tablet has a cell signal, can the data be uploaded in the field? Absolutely, yes. The data that's collected with the EasyScan um, through the EasyScan app can be uploaded to our popular ZoneScan net viewing uh, and data analysis software. Um, you need a, uh, an existing account to do so. Um, that data is uploaded through the tablet um, via Wi-Fi or an internet connection. Um, and that can easily, easily be uploaded to ZoneScanNet. Um, the entire time process of uploading data to ZoneScanNet literally is just a few seconds. Um, if you have Wi-Fi or internet connection on your tablet out in the field, it's as easy as uh, hitting a button, an upload button, and the data will get uploaded to ZoneScanNet within a matter of seconds. Um, and then someone from a remote office, anyone who has internet access and access to your account um, can log on and just see the activity that you did out in the field. Um, this is a fantastic um, use and feature for monitoring um, work progress of your field staff out in the field. Um, asking them to upload the data upon completion of a leak um, activity um, allows um, supervisory staff or engineering staff to see the data um, almost in instantaneously uh, and allows you to efficiently organize and manage your field uh, work crew. That's a good question. Thanks for the question. All right, one more. Uh, or we got a we got a lot coming in. So um, let's see. Next one is. Uh, all right. During the uh, initial first setup, what is the purpose of setting a time for, of deployment for the sensors? What happens is the way the app works is the sensors are programmed while they're in your hand before you deploy them out in the valve. Um, in order for pinpointing to occur, these sensors need to be time synchronized and they need to be programmed and turn on at precisely the same time. So as the sensors are in your hand, and you are turning on the loggers, these loggers now both, the, the, the sensors both now have the time, the countdown time in their memory 
Um, and they are just waiting for that time to occur in order for them to be, uh, to, to program and begin their, their correlation. Um, so that initial countdown stopwatch allows the user to set how much or how long it's going to take until these sensors begin their listening. Um, and you're gonna set that time to give you enough time to deploy the red logger, walk down the end of the street and deploy the blue logger. Um, and you wanna give yourself enough time to do that. And the running clock in the upper left-hand corner of the screen will keep you posted on how well you're doing um, meeting that timeline. Um, so that's the purpose of, of, the, uh, of the, the setup clock at the beginning of the app, is to give you enough time to deploy these sensors to make sure, to ensure that they're in the valve at the time that they begin their listening. All right, so, uh, okay, one thing I wanna address is it seems like some um, people were having trouble uh, listening to the presentation, and so we definitely apologize for that. Uh, we've been recording since the beginning, so we're gonna make this recording available uh, to everyone. And uh, again, if you had trouble listening, we apologize. So, um, all right, moving on here. Um, what's the differences between EasyScan and the AquaScan 610? The difference between the EasyScan and our other correlator, um, which is the AquaScan 610, is that uh, is is the way that the primary difference is the way the data is is collected. Um, the EasyScan, uh, the data, the listening, the time that the sensors are listening is data that's stored in the sensor, and then upon completion of the listening time. The data then is downloaded onto the app for uh, data analysis, correlation analysis. With our 610, that is what we refer to as a real-time correlator. The data coming from the sensors is continuously streamed via RF signal to the processor that the user is holding, uh, and that data continues uh, in an uninterrupted uh, form from the sensors to the, uh, to the processor. Um, so the 610 we call a real-time correlator. The easy scan is more of an offline correlator. Um, as far as the analysis of the data though, um, that is pretty much similar between uh, both the uh, easy scan and the, um, uh, the 610. Um, the analysis of the, of the data is really done by the software in the app or the processor. Um, in no case uh, with our 610 or with our EasyScan are the, are the sensors communicating with each other and doing any type of processing. Uh, all the sensors do uh, is collect data, record sound, and send that data to a central unit where the sound then is analyzed and where the magic of, of correlation and pinpointing occurs. All right, we got an easy one here. Uh, is the EasyScan app a separate app from the ZoneScan app? And I can answer that, that's yes. Um, yes, it is. Uh, uh, the app is separate. Um, all of our apps are available on the Google Play Store. Um, uh, in most cases, though, you will need uh, the product um, to uh, do more to actually open up the app and, and get it working. Uh, but, uh, but all of our apps um, are separate apps. Um, the beauty of the full line of Guterman uh, leak detection equipment that use apps is that all of our apps, once you become familiar with one, the flavor and operation of all the other apps are very similar. Um, and uh, it, within no time, an operator will achieve a, a very high level of comfort uh, working across all of our app um, formats. Um, so explain the, uh, another one is explain the importance of filtering out noise, such as electrical and such like, th and things like that. Of course. These sensors really aren't very smart. Um, they're good listeners, uh, but all they're doing is collecting sound. And that sound can not only come from the source of a leak, but the hum of electricity, the whir of a pump, the passing traffic, 
um, um, or wherever. Um, so it's absolutely vital for any piece of leak detection equipment to successfully pinpoint the leak is to be able to filter out unnecessary sounds or sounds that are not leaks. Um, our algorithms and the way our filtering is, 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 is programmed and developed and designed is that we can do that. We understand the frequency of a leak. We understand the, the, how a typical leak sounds um, and um, we can filter that out. Um, using the frequency, um, the hertz of uh, the sound wave, um, we can easily filter out electrical hum because electricity runs at uh, 50 and 60 hertz. Um, so um, establishing a filter um, to filter out that 50 and 60 hertz, um, you can easily then eliminate um, the sound of electricity. Um, also too, as the um, software is looking at a leak sound, um, it's looking for a broad sound, um, which a leak typically makes. Uh, unlike a very narrow or a very focused sound of a pump. Um, so by using and analyzing in great detail the sound frequency or hertz of the leak, um, we can um, um, rule out quite a bit of, of alternative non-leak sounds, allowing the equipment to focus on the leak sound um, without getting confused or distracted by other non-leak sounds. All right, Eric. Um, so uh, we've had a uh, we've had a few people um, come into the meeting a little late. So for those who just arrived, um, we are recording this video and uh, we're we're going to make this presentation available to everyone um, after after it's over. Um, apologize. Uh, apologies if you got in late. Um, so next question here. Um, okay, good one. Uh, will it work on PVC? Yes, it will work on PVC. Um, the, um, the issue of PVC is when there's a leak on PVC, it's also making a sound. Um, and um, this equipment finds leaks by hearing and sensing the sound. Um, the concern on PVC though, is that the sound as it's traveling down the pipe wall doesn't travel quite as far. It's a softer material. It absorbs the energy of the sound quicker. Um, as opposed to sound traveling down the wall of a ductile iron pipe. Ductile iron uh, allows a better propagation of sound um, and thus the sound travels greater. So what that means in the real world of deploying sensors is that you simply need to put your sensors closer together to ensure that they're capturing the sound emanating from the leak on that plastic pipe. Um, the great thing about the easy scan sensors is that they're very small and compact. You can easily put these on uh, meters, curb stops, uh, hydrant valves, hydrant barrels. Um, as long as you've got a nice clean metal to metal connection, um, you, the, the, the sensor will, um, will pick up that sound. Uh, but again, with plastic, sound doesn't travel quite as far on plastic. So it's necessary to put those sensors uh, closer together. Um, typically, um, you know, three, two, 250, 300 feet apart um, to, uh, to capture those, um, those plastic leaks. All right, so I've got one uh, question asking the largest diameter of pipe and uh, another asking for the furthest distance between the loggers. Uh, okay. Ended or um, diameter of pipe really is, um, it's the same situation with plastic as, as, as the sound emanates from the leak. Um, the more mass of the pipe will absorb that sound and the sound won't travel quite as far. Um, so uh, if you're on larger diameter pipes, uh, you typically anything over 24 inches or so, uh, 20 to 24 inches, um, you do need to uh, put the sensors uh, closer together um, to capture that pipe. Um, it's impossible really to say that, the, you know, no, they won't be able to, to capture any sound because um, you simply don't know until you put the loggers on the pipe and, and, and do a sound recording uh, and a correlation recording. Um, 
So um, uh, a large diameter pipe um, uh, presents the same challenge that a uh, uh, that plastic pipe um, would present, and that is having to put the loggers of the sensors a little closer together. Um, but uh, it's typically uh, your typical uh, municipal pipe, uh, twenty uh, you know anything under twenty inches. Um, on ductile iron and cast iron, um, you can put these uh, sensors. Uh, typically, uh, their sweet spot is a typical city block, which is uh, six to 700 feet apart. All right, I've got a question. Uh, what about um, interior building use? Uh, what's sort of the, the capability of EasyScan for that? Um, interior building use can present a challenge um, simply because um, in many cases the pipes are really not, um, the pipes are sort of floating in, in space. Um, and that can mute the sound quite a bit. Um, in addition to um, that, um, a, a complicated web network of, of parallel pipes um, can present a challenge. Um, however, um, if you know the, the end points of your pipe and you're certain that you're putting your sensors on the same length of pipe, um, there's, uh, you know, there is a chance that, that uh, a leak can be, can be heard. Um, you're really getting back to the, uh, you know, is that leak sound making it to both of the sensors? Um, and in the case of, of, of a building, um, you are eventually going to need to know the length of that pipe uh, and where it goes so you can put a sensor at the other end. Um, it would be a challenging environment, but um, uh, theoretically, um, it is possible to do that. And again, these, these sensors are, are compact. Um, I have, I've shot leaks where I've put a sensor uh, inside a house um, where the uh, uh, pipeline comes into the meter. Um, and the other sensor out at the curb stop and have uh, shot a leak on a, a service line coming into, um, coming into the house. Um, so um, it's certainly quite possible. All right, we have uh, one, maybe two more questions. Um, okay. An easy one, let's see. Uh, did you, so did you say the sensors connect the phone via Bluetooth and wouldn't that have a, a very limited range? Uh, the sensors um, connect via the comm link. The comm link connects to the uh, to the uh, to your device, your Android device, via Bluetooth. At no point during the use of the sensors at the Easy Scan do you need to have any type of of distance. Um, you are programming the, the the sensors while they are in your hand with the comm link. The comm link actually comes with a little lanyard, and you wear it around your neck. Um, it's about the, the comm link's about the size of a credit card. Um, and you're holding your, your Android tablet. Um, so all of the components are right there within your hand when you program them. Um, once the stopwatch clock begins, there is no connectivity at that point. Uh, the sensors are counting down the time. You're going to deploy them. Your GPS plotting them using the GPS on the tablet and not on, on the sensors. Uh, and when the sensors are doing their listening, all they're doing is collecting the data. They are not transmitting the data. Um, they are just collecting it and holding on to it. Once the listening period is, is complete, the operator then goes and physically picks up the, the sensors. And as the operator is holding them in their hand, then the data is downloaded via the comm link uh, and the Bluetooth onto the tablet. So at no point during the operation uh, do you have to establish a long distance um, communication connection. All right, um, let's see, do we have time for one more question? Yeah, bring it on, bring it on, one more. All right. Let's see here. Um, we have, uh, again, for those who are just joining us, I think there was one or two additions, uh, but we will be making this uh, recording available to customers after, afterwards. Um, so uh, look out for that. And uh, okay, so we have a question. Um, what is the average listening period time per deployment? And that's, that's, 
Well, I answer that in two different answers. Um, overall, let's talk about overall time. The time that begins when I pull my truck up to a potential leak spot and I open up my easy scan kit to the time that I have data on my tablet that I can send or save. Um, I would say, um, and assuming that your uh, valve lids open up fairly easy and your valves are clean, I would say total time would be no more than 25 to 30 minutes. Um, the actual listening time, and that 25 to 35 minutes includes programming the sensors, walking to valve, the red valve, walking to the valve where the blue sensor is deployed, uh, waiting the 30 seconds or so of listening, walking back to each valve to collect the, the sensors, downloading the data, analyzing the data, saving or sending the data. Um, the actual listening time, that red countdown number of when the sensors are out in the field, um, in the valves actually doing their listening, uh, is usually somewhere between 30 and 45 seconds. Good question. All right, uh, good one to wrap up on. Can we schedule a demo online or schedule an interactive demonstration? Um, something like that. Well, right now, um, um, the world is changing rapidly in front of our eyes. Um, we um, have always been very strong with demos. Um, the Easy Scan Kit, we have absolutely no problem sending you a, a, a kit um, where um, the kit will come ready to go um, with a tablet in it and the app. And um, we can give you a brief um, online or over the phone training. I will, uh, you'll arrange that with myself and Max. Uh, we can teach you how to use it, and you can take it out in the field and, and play around with it. Um, um, we can certainly do that, and if you're interested in that, uh, please make sure that uh, you leave your name and, and contact information uh, in the chat. Um, at the end of our presentation here, we'll put up uh, some phone numbers also. Feel free to give those numbers uh, a call. Um, but yeah, we can certainly ship out an easy scan kit. It is that easy. Uh, for you to use. Um, we, we, uh, we love uh, sending the equipment out um, for um, hands-on demonstrations out in the field, um, and we can certainly arrange that. Is that it, Max? Yep, uh, I think that's, that's pretty much it. So okay, well, before we uh, sign off here, um, on behalf of myself uh, and Max, um, and uh, there's today you've heard from just myself and Max, but trust me, there's a there's a great team of uh, Guterman employees uh, that were involved in this uh, that provided a tremendous amount of of help and direction in putting this together. Um, Guterman's a fantastic uh, family company, um, and uh, so I want to thank everyone um, involved in this uh, process um, and. Um, and to uh, everyone who turned, tuned in today, um, thank you very much. I'm humbled uh, that you uh, gave us uh, 45 minutes of your time. Um, and uh, we're very grateful for you. So uh, everyone, um, Max is going to put up a screen here uh, with a couple of phone numbers on it um, for your information. And uh, with that being said, um, again, thank you very much. I'm Eric Galassi, and uh, thanks for joining.